what's up guys back with another twin motion tutorial i'm going to show you how i did this rendering in twin motion let's get right into the video all right so as you can see here i have a cottage house that i personally modeled in revit 2024 and if you're interested you can check out this model on renderreboot.com and that is my website at renderreboot.com all right so i'm going to show you the rendering settings but before i do that i kind of want to point out some areas that i use to help enhance my rendering so as you can see i've used uh, decals and i didn't change the size or the depth but i did change the opacity so you can make them lighter by bringing down the opacity or you can make them darker okay so i use this to kind of bring some more realism to the textures of my um of the concrete base of this 3d scene um, or you call it foundation if you will and also use decals on top of my roof as you can see here and I didn't do anything special I just used decals to kind of help enhance the rendering to bring it bring some of that realism and also you may be wondering the materials so if we go to our uh, the material picker you can click on the model and I've used a slightly worn chrome and for the facade of the building I use ash 05g and also from twin motion I use some sofa and you can find this sofa um, I, I want to say I did go to mega scans and I use 3d assets or you can actually look in the twin motion library to actually find different assets that you want to use for um, for your 3d scene now i do believe this the this particular uh 3d assets are in twin motion um you can go to backyard you can go to i think it's in sofas yep right there so it is it, it, i did use um twin motion library all right so now that i've kind of cleared that up we also use scattered vegetation. I use different um, grass types. I may create a tutorial on how I created this grass scene, but right now I just kind of want to show you the path tracer settings. So let's get right to it. All right, so the first thing guys, you already know, you want to click on the plus sign and that's going to add your image and you want to pick a view that suits you or that is a good composition and I've already created my view. So I'm gonna click on my image, which is render one, and I'm gonna go to the environment tab. So I'm gonna start playing around with some of my settings to get a better result. Guys, if you're liking this video, don't forget to smash that like button, hit the notification bell for me, and subscribe. All right, so we're gonna change that to 1230. And right now, if you go to details, my sun intensity is really high, which is the default, which is about 100,000. I wanna crank that down all the way. So we're gonna do five. All right, so we're gonna leave our sun size and our sun reflection the same. And let's look at our ambient. Our ambient is at one. I think I want to boost that up to three. Okay. All right. So scroll down. Right now we have our sun location at 90 degrees. I want to actually rotate that. Let's do 120. Well, let's do 160. All right. So before I go any further, I kind of I want to go to render and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my path tracer on because when I'm making these um, 
changes to the settings, you're gonna see uh, a difference when it's in the rendering setting. So go to Path Tracer, right now it's on low, okay? So we can go ahead and put it on high and then we'll change that some more later. All right, so let's go to environment. We're gonna keep our sun north offset at 160. I wanna change my month. I'm gonna do October, all right? Okay, so I wanna enable my HDRI environment and we're going to play around with some of the intensity. We'll keep that. Well, we'll actually keep that at one. Now let's change the rotation. Okay, so I've changed the rotation. As you can see, that sun is coming in pretty hot. Um, let's see if we can fix some of this. All right, so my HDRI is approaching storm. And we'll keep it there. Let's go to camera. Exposure. Let's change our white balance. Okay. Let me see what's going on. See, that's what's happening. My sun intensity changed back to 100,000. I want to drop that. There we go. So that's what I'm looking for right here. This is where you want to be. Okay. So now that we go to camera, I'm checking my white balance, which I have at 6,200. Okay, and that looks good. My focal length is at 18. I'm gonna move that up. I want a closer image. So we can keep it at 22. Now we're gonna play with our details. So my vignetting right now is currently at 55. I want to change this down to 45. My sharpness is at 50. That's really high for sharpness. Um, sometimes when you're doing uh, any rendering, in my opinion, that if you have the sharpness too high, things start to look too rigid. So you wanna kind of give some smooth surfaces uh, rather than really sharp edges. So. For this, I'm going to bring my sharpness down about half to about 25%. And for my chromatic abrasion, I think I just added maybe 1% to that. And we always want to have parallelism check. That kind of, you know, parallelism guys, what that does, it just ensures the vertical, it ensures the vertical parallel lines appear vertical regardless of the view and angle of the camera. So it's gonna help straighten up our composition um, all right, so we're looking at some more settings here. I'm going to enable film back and we're going to keep it at super 35. All right. All right. So image is looking good. Going to render. We're going to boost up our rendering now that we have our, we have our view. We have everything uh, in the image that we're looking at. So we're gonna boost it up to 1048. And I wanna change my max bounce to 25. All right, so we're gonna leave emissive materials checked, denoiser, we're gonna leave that checked. And, you know, I'm gonna boost up my fireflies pretty high to 25, okay? All right. So now I'm going to FX and I'm play a little, I'm going to play around with the contrast and my saturation and we're going to add a color gradient on this. So my contrast is right now is at 50%. We'll leave that there. My saturation, I'm going to bring it down to 42%. We'll click on color gradient. I use Fuji. Now Twin Motion does offer um, really cool gradients uh, that you can choose from. Um, but in this tutorial, I only I chose Fuji. So I'm gonna keep it at Fuji. I'm gonna go to image. All right. So the reason why the output size is grayed out is because in camera settings, when you go to film back, I have it enabled. So if you want to change your output size 2k to 4k you got to do that first so i do 
I changed it the output size to UHD, which is 4K. And then in details, I'm going to check tile rendering. All right. So now I'm gonna go back to my camera settings and then I'm gonna enable the film back. So that's gonna take me back to my view and that's gonna take me back to um, where I want it to be. All right, so guys, if you like this tutorial, don't forget to smash that like button for me and we'll be back with another one.